Howdy folks, uh, Kathy Williams DeVries here um, and continuing on in my series Introduction to All the Keys of the Scale. Uh, we now come to three sharps, A major and F sharp minor. Uh, now for the purposes of these videos I'm actually using four sources. Um, the uh, the first source that I would recommend that you go to because it groups the scales together uh, in their keys um, is the Thurston the clarinet. Um, it's really good. It, it has the scales, uh, the broken chords, the interrupted scales both major and minor and the scales in thirds. Um, and I'm also using um, some of the close hardback method. Um, it's got some uh, additional scales in here, um, including the interrupted scale at the octave, uh, which is absolutely brilliant, and scales in sixths. And then a hybrid of the two with a few extra is the Behrman method for clarinet division three. So uh, what we're looking for in A major, um, the three sharps, F, C and G, um, so that you need uh, to make the connection between the low B and the C sharp. Um, and uh, the uh, returning scale from the Behrman is very good for that. Uh, also very good in the interrupted scale and the uh, returning scale is um, the workout for the left hand, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Um, and then you've got F sharp to G sharp um, in the upper octave. And of course, um, Um, you'll find that in uh, the Behrman and Thurston it only goes up to a top F sharp. Um, F sharp minor is quite interesting um, in the both uh, the melodic and harmonic minor you have to deal with B to C sharp to D sharp. Um, or, um, sorry, that's not right. Or, and um, you'll come across that um, in the interrupted scale, although they don't do the minor keys in the bare mind of the returning scale. Um, so what you're dealing with is a D sharp and an E sharp. So let's um, go through... Um, in terms of, I'm looking at the Thurston now and comparing it to the Behrman, um, and it's pretty much exactly the same. So, uh, uh, do remember that because you're going down to a low E, um, and you're using the G sharp to use the right hand, E, left hand F sharp, right hand um, G sharp. And you might even want to practice that to get that uh, really strong. So, there's no real, um, I've already uh, told you the various little tricky bits, but uh, Um, F sharp minor um, doesn't really matter which oh, in uh, when you come down make sure that you do use the left hand F sharp so that you can do the right hand E sharp going back to the F sharp and then on to the G sharp
so there's no real drama there and as I said um, with the interrupted scale um, there are a couple of bits that you can practice certainly the first four notes so that you get a really nice transition between the B and the C sharp and then um, between the D, D to G sharp and E to A you've got that left hand work that's actually a really really good exercise to practice um, in the uh, in the Thurston uh, the finger exercise suggested uh, between the A G sharp and B you really get it really smooth between the B and the G sharp and believe me you do it a little bit faster you'll understand what the difficulty is and then the other one is in the throat tones Again, that is a really, really powerful uh, left hand exercise, and I do uh, recommend that uh, you get the Longinus um, method uh, because that has a it's about a four page exercise on the left hand study. Um, and uh, I have a YouTube video uh, out on that as well, uh, going through that. Uh, very, very powerful, but. Um, in terms of the A major, be aware, don't have the um, E flat key down for the C sharp, that'll be too sharp. I didn't mention on the D major scale is getting a really tr smooth transition between the B and the C sharp but also between the A and the C sharp and in fact the top octave is really good transition between the G sharp and the F sharp is also something to work on but apart from that um, there's no real dramas there F sharp minor on the other hand is a little bit of a doozy um, because uh, in the Thurston and Behrmann, um, we, look, we do the melodic. The first one and the Behrmann tend to prefer the melodic over the harmonic. Um, the close A does give you the choice. So in this case, um, really good pinky exercises. Uh, really, really challenging. Uh, again, use the left hand F sharp. But uh, we're going A, B, C sharp. D sharp to a B and I forgot to mention that when you are doing the E sharp to go to the F sharp you will need to put on the two right hand side keys um, that's the alternate fingering for the F sharp um, it's the chromatic fingering for the F sharp uh, we mightn't have needed to use it up until now, but it's a very good fingering. Although in this case you may need to use the normal F sharp in order to get down to the D sharp. Um, I probably recommend that you use the regular fingering actually, now that I've completely contradicted myself. But, um, really, really powerful exercise. Turn the D sharp to the B, and then this is really brilliant. I recommend that when you practice your scales, don't practice the whole scale, 
do take the bit that's giving you grief. <laughs> In the next octave you will need to use the right hand B, left hand C sharp to get to the right hand D sharp. And here, unless you have this extra key and don't mind using it, I do recommend that you slide the finger down, slide the right hand finger down to the B, otherwise um, you won't get to the D sharp. And here I do recommend that you use the normal F sharp because you have to get down to the D sharp. And here be very clear, don't put the E flat key down for the C sharp. Um, but it's all it's all right on the way down. we depart from the uh, Thurston and Behrman um, and we go to the close and the interrupted scale at the octave. Uh, very very challenging. Um, there are videos, oh, videos of me um, doing this warm-up um, if you wanted to search for them. Uh, now the close is uh, grouped like the Behrman on scale type rather than scale key, so you do have to go looking for it. Um, I don't think there's any real dramas with A major. <laughs> people ask me why do you practice all these scales I say it's really good for your sight reading because you get to completely know a key in and out so that when you see a key signature at the front of the music you know what to expect so when you see three sharps it's like great I've done half a dozen different versions of the A major scale not necessarily starting on the tonic um, and that's why I find these scales interrupted at the octave so powerful because you are starting the scale on every single note of it but you have to remember to keep in the key so that's why I like these the um, thing is it only goes up to the clarion A you're not working in um, the altissimo um, F sharp minor, very, very challenging. Um, I mean, the melodic's not too bad. In this case, I would use the regular F sharp fingering so that you can get down to the G sharp. If you use the chromatic fingering, it's messy. Especially when you go fast. probably added in a uh, A sharp there naughty me. Uh, remember the uh, which pinky to put down. But what's nice with the melodic scale is that you get to do the major scale on the way down, which is what makes the harmonic so challenging. Etc. Sorry, I'm not doing this very well today, but you get the general idea. And then once you've done the interrupted scales, you then have the returning scale. Um, again, you can really work on the smooth connections between C sharp B and G sharp F sharp. Um, remember not to put the uh, E flat key down for the top C sharp and you get a nice little workout both in the throat tones and pinky keys. <laughs> So the first octave is actually brilliant. Especially here you're getting 
both a left hand workout and a piggy workout. <laughs> my clarinet could probably go into the repairer uh, my pinky keys are a little bit stubborn but uh what you've encountered on the way up you encounter on the way down um, okay so um, once we've got through those I think it's time for the arpeggios and broken chords um, I don't think there's any huge uh, difficulties in these ones I uh, remember don't put the E flat key down. Uh, I tend to like using the right hand E because it kind of keeps it in the same hand. Um, F sharp minor. choose what F sharp you want. Um, I quite like the overblown B flat. So uh, that's the first of the broken chords uh, in the Behrman and Thurston. So there's no real dramas there. But um, after you've done your um, interrupted scales and before you do your returning scales uh, you have the broken chords uh, number four on page 16 and these are a little bit harder um, well maybe not the A major <laughs> Again, make sure you take that uh, E flat key off and you can practice this one slowly the second half when it goes into the sixth um, I do uh, recommend practicing scales in six uh, as legato exercises in the F sharp minor um, I don't recommend you use the overblown B flat as the top F sharp because you are going from an A, it'll probably turn out just as a B flat. Um, I like to use 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 E flat. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, oh, okay, so I did use it there but I tongued it. Um, and in this case I would uh, continue to use that fingering although you could use the overblown B flat uh, the second time around so um, and uh, for your uh, what else do we have? Oh yes, we have um, all the diminished um, would just start on an A flat, which is the same as the one that starts on an F. Uh, we have chords of the seventh. Um, I don't think there's any real drama with A major. Do remember that you will need to use the left hand E to get to the right hand G sharp. Um, oops. Um, it does give you a chance to trot out a high B. I prefer one two one two E flat. straightforward when you get 
get to the next part, I do recommend you practice it slowly. <laughs> smooth legato connections between the notes. Uh, but other than that, uh, there's no real dramas for a major. Um, and then we come to the thirds. Um, I do take the thirds from uh, the Behman and Thurston, although there is a good um, thirds um, exercise, uh, which for me is on page 168 and 169 of my close, although I don't think they sell the hardbacks anymore. So, A major. <laughs> difficulties getting um, actually that's it's really good it's really good pinky work harder than you think you try it uh, the uh, thirds for F sharp minor is quite uh, challenging especially if you are doing the harmonic <laughs> Uh, you need really good, uh, and especially in the uh, melodic, really good connections between the D sharp and the C sharp. And really good pinky work there. Um, and then of course you've got the normal one. off. Um, I don't think there's any real dramas there. As I said, good pinky work, good left hand work, and it gets even better. The next scale, the next degree of the scale, but uh, and here um, you will need to slide to the D, to the E sharp in order to get to the C, in G sharp, and you can tell that I really need my um, pinky keys uh, looked at because um, they're a little bit clunky. But as you go up, uh, now this octave is really difficult. Because you go from the D sharp to the C sharp and then up to an E sharp, um, I find going from C sharp to D sharp quite challenging. It's really, really finicky, especially when you've got a factor in the E flat key. Uh, so that's that's uh, quite challenging. Uh, so from the thirds. Uh, you then come to your scale in sixths. Uh, this is in the uh, Behrman, uh, page 41 for me. Um, these scales are brilliantly done, brilliant done slowly. Um, the top F sharp, I recommend the fingering I used earlier. Uh, <laughs> you do it any faster, especially a Try and get a really smooth connection between the B and the G sharp. Be aware that in order to get to the G sharp you will need to use the right hand B. And then getting up towards the top again. There. Um, 
and then F sharp minor, um, the use of the uh, melodic minor does give you some really strange harmonies that will tempt you to go into F sharp major. <laughs> Now this is uh, quite difficult, this also cropped up in a grade 5 piece that I'm teaching a student for an exam at the moment, it D sharp to B, uh, you will need to use the, well you can use either, I prefer to use uh, the right hand B because it keeps it in the one hand, quite difficult. Note that I give more weight to the bottom note uh, so that you get a nice legato. Um, there is also a exercise in six in the close A. Um, I think there's a couple in fact. Or is there just one for the majors and one for the minors? Oh, okay, there's just one for the majors and one for the minors. And there's a really powerful octave exercise uh, on the next page as well. Uh, so for A major, um, I don't worry about the articulation. Um, I slur it all because I use it as a tone exercise. If my F sharp minor, this has got the this has got the really nasty stuff. The B to D sharp, uh, which is not easy. And a, and a lot of clunky thing, uh, pinky finger work. Ah, it's really, really nasty. So these shouldn't sound, um, I mean, I'm trying to make them sound as beautiful as possible. Obviously, they're very, very uh, difficult. Um, and once I've finished all the scales, I'm actually going to introduce you to the close A um, as a warm-up and study tool on its own. But uh, that is A major and F sharp minor for you. Um, I hope you've gotten something out of that. Any questions, don't hesitate to contact me on any number of my emails, Skype, Twitter, Facebook. Um, I'm on it all uh, and don't forget to uh, um, friend me on Facebook if you like I've also got a page Kathy Williams 76 on Facebook you can like um, Twitter is Kathy Williams 76 Skype is Kathy Williams DeVries but I'll put this at the bottom of the video so uh, that's A major and F sharp minor uh, uh, join me for, I think I'm due to do three flats and all the fun and games you have with three flats. So thanks for listening, bye for now.